Hey there, I'm Ross Quintana with Social Magnets and welcome to this quick 10-minute um, video on a, it's one of the bullet points from my new blog post called The Power of Being Real and you can see the full 45-minute uh, message links below and uh, for people who like what they hear they want to dig into it more uh, and get more in depth because that's what I do in these short videos are smaller bite-sized chunks for people who are too busy or just want a little tidbit um, or whatnot uh, that's fine too I break down each of the individual points so if you listen to the full one um, you can come back and get additional um, deeper concepts on each individual video that I go into and so you don't have to do one or the other they all complement each other and this for, this one's called brands are ideas and uh, you know the concept of the of the blog post, the power of being real, is really just kind of something that that I feel compelled as I observe marketing, and how it's been done and how things are done. And there's a lot of problems, and there's a lot of of dumb ways that marketing's being done where it could be done a lot smarter. And and a lot of my videos are about the concepts more than here's the three tactics to get yourself another ten followers on Pinterest. Who cares? There's other people to write those type of articles. Um, I look at how things work, and and I look at trends and and innovation, and, and and see where you know help people to understand more deeper what's going on, so that then they can innovate upon that. So the first thing that we talk about here is brands or ideas, and um, you know in this what I cover is is this concept that brands. You know, we think about what is a brand, and you think, well, if you think about a brand, you know, it could be Starbucks, it could be a brand, and you think about the logo, right? Because your brain has to associate things with that brand, so there's going to be some association. Um, it's going to be a collection of association. It's going to be a collection of what you see, right? Like, okay, uh, there's the logo. I can see their stores. Um, I can think in my senses of how it smells when I walk in. I can think of how everybody talks about getting this Starbucks, so you have a social aspect of it. You can think about how uh, if I feel better, if I feel like I've treated myself to go through the drive through I could think about um, things that they do, things they support, right, conceptually, things that they don't support. All of these can be part of the brand. And it can come down to, oh, I love, you know, their turkey sandwich that they serve at this one. Or, you know, I love the music, you know. For some people that really resonates and it has nothing to do with coffee, actually. Um, there's different anchor, brand anchors, that, that bring people in there. But what that whole collection of observations and interactions and relationships add up to is an idea, right? They spawn from an idea, but they also create an idea in my mind. That's the brand. So all of these different things come together. In a way, they start their genesis in the creators of, of, of that brand's heads, whether they did it on purpose or by accident. And then there's all these touch points that come out that the consumer interacts, and it's how we know, how we recognize. Do we know the difference between Tolly's and Starbucks? Well, if you've interacted with both of those brands, then you know what this one is, and you know what that one is, and you know the colors they use on their logo, and the difference between their stripe logo and their round logo, and you know the difference between their music and their music and their pastries and those pastries, and you know where brand confusion comes in when there's a lot of Me Too brands. You know, maybe it's harder to differentiate really between um, two brands, and in some brands are providing, uh, in some cases, more value, but they're the underdog brand, and so maybe the social proof is greater in another brand. And brands also, the ideas change. Why? Because the environment, which is the consumers, the thinking, the mindset of a group of people, whether it's a target, a certain market, or society as a whole, impact the way people perceive and the way people think. So a great example like when Atkins diet came out. Before that, everything was, hey, great, everything's great. And guess what that did to 
um, the way people perceived food. Like food had to change because all of a sudden people are saying carbs are bad, carbs are bad. Everyone's hearing carbs are bad. So all of a sudden people going to McDonald's are saying, I'll hold the bun, I'll just take the meat and the cheese. Well, hold the bun, McDonald's is like, okay, no big deal. But how's that trickle out? What are the unintended consequences of that? Is that McDonald's then is ordering less buns from the bun maker. Now the bun maker is the one that's getting abused at the bottom, right? Because now all of a sudden they're going, hey, you know, one out of 10 customers says they don't want the bun anymore. Um, so 10% of our bun sales go down. So we don't need as much. So we're decreasing our sale to you. And that trickles its way back through all the other makers and, 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 and parties involved and stakeholders in that. So when society changes the way they think about something, it has huge effect. Now in our times, the way people are thinking about things is shifting faster and faster thanks to the internet. As new information, a lot of times can change your perception. So at the beginning, you think, hey, oh, this guy's really a great guy. And then you read a news article that says, oh, this guy, uh, you see it with sports figures all the time, you know, oh, he, he beat his dog to death. All of a sudden you thought, oh, he seemed like a nice guy, but he seems like a real jerk now. Well, nothing changed. Actually, you liked him because of the way he played football. But when you hear new information, that goes into the mix of the brand, right? And now that swirls together with everything else you know. Now, why did you like him? For football. Okay? You liked him for football till he beat the crud out of his dog. And now that became more important than football. Because maybe he's a better player this month. But in this month you found out he beat his dog to death. And all of a sudden, technically if you like him because of his football playing, and, and now he's actually performing better, you should like him better. Because that's why you were there in the first place. Actually, your core motivation for liking him didn't matter. Notice how that's a very powerful thing to understand from a PR perspective, right? Because all of a sudden, a piece of new information changed that brand to you. And that brand, even though it, it really had nothing to do with his ability to perform on the field, that changed the outcome. It changed the idea. It changed your association with that person and with that brand. And so all these things matter, right? And brands start as ideas. Now, if you use marketing the wrong way, which is let's take a, a mediocre product we don't care about, we're not compelling, and we're just going to manipulate people's emotion with marketing and, and association and neuromarketing and all this to get them to buy. We're going to just spam it out. It's a numbers game. We don't care. We'll pay this much to get this many impressions and we'll get this much increase in sales and as long as the stockholders are happy, no one really cares if the product is good or bad or what the users think or the employees or any other thing. You see, that's the problem with business now is that's how a lot of stuff and ideas are designed. But what's happening is we have this huge rising up of ideas and the ability to produce things, both produce media, right, your own media, and also the ability to produce, um, sorry about that, uh, to produce your own media and produce your own products and, 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 and to take an idea and innovate in the market and have a legitimate opportunity to make something of it. You know, it used to be just like in the music industry. Well, you had to have your demo tape and you had to know the right people and all this. Now you can get on there and, hey, I don't need a record deal. I can go on and get millions of views on YouTube. If I'm a great singer, I can build my, I, I can make my own MP3s. I can make, I can write a book and I can sell. I don't need a publisher. I can sell it directly and make all the money and become a millionaire without the gatekeepers that used to run everything. Right? That's the power when you have ideas that can bubble up. Then that old way of thinking of doing business where we don't care about the consumer and we don't care, uh, we'll use any tactic we need to to reach into your pocket, old school marketing, right, is going to get challenged. And it's going to get challenged hard. It's going to get challenged more as we get further into the future. Uh, and, and people are able to show better options. This is like Facebook, great example. You know, Facebook, I don't care for that platform. You know, to me, they broke their own platform so that you have to pay, right, 
to talk to people who you paid to get them to like your page, your business page, and then when you send out a message, it only goes to 2% of the people, unless you pay to talk to the people who already said they wanted to hear you. It's like, to me, that's just greed. And that's just, a, that's just not caring about your customer, right? Oh, you can get a few more bucks now, but as soon as a better opportunity comes up and a better option, those business users are gonna be out. They're looking, they're hoping someone comes up and clobbers Facebook and has the users that don't have to do the business models that way. Um, you know, we've seen that before in business, that's how it works. The concept is, is that your brand is an idea. And all of these things that surround your idea, that you are aware of and unaware of, um, affect your brand in the mind of the consumer. And so, if you don't know what your big idea is, then you better. If you're running a business and you don't know your idea, you haven't sat down and really contemplated on what it is and why is it compelling and why does it matter, everything else should flow from that. And if it does, it's genuine. That's why this is part of the power of being real because when all that's authentic lining up from the, from the, the product itself or the service itself, then everything else will flow out. That's why people, when they meet me, you know, they like me because I'm real. I, I'm genuine. If I say something, that, if they say, hey, what about this? And I say, I don't know what that is. And they go, oh, well, am I supposed to say, oh, you're a sort of media expert. Do I know everything? No, I don't. If they say something that a lot of people know, maybe I don't know it. I don't care. If I don't know what I say, I don't know that. Let me look it up. I'll look it up and tell you 10 ways that people haven't thought about it before. My abilities and strengths are in in understanding things quickly and being able to look at something and figure out what's really going on and, and see it in a way that other people hadn't seen it before. You know. But the fact is, you know, it's it's genuine. It's about being real. So you gotta get real with the idea behind your business or service. Um, Thanks for sitting with me for 12 minutes. We'll wrap it up right there. Hit subscribe. Leave a comment. Love to hear what you have to say and what you think. Uh, the next uh, video in this uh, series, tied, you know, go back and read the blog post. Watch the full video if you're interested. Um, the next one in the series is called Marketing to Tell Stories.